Welcome to New Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Sin Marca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com Soho, Brand Studio whitebackdrops.com Vanessa Joy is a professional wedding photographer. With an emphasis on photojournalistic wedding photos, she primarily photographs weddings in New York City and Manhattan area, as well as New Jersey, Austin, and Dallas, Texas. Vanessa focuses on creating a unique boutique experience with each of her couple's weddings photography. She is also sponsored by Canon and Profoto in recognition of her international success as one of the top photographers in the world. She has over 20 years of experience as a photographer and enjoys capturing everything from hill country weddings, large New York City weddings and elegant formal affairs, to farm weddings with rustic wedding photos and luxury wedding events. And yes, she still gets butterflies at every wedding. This is No Watermark Photography Podcast. Welcome, Vanessa Joy, wedding photographer. Welcome, Vanessa Joy, to No Watermark Photography Podcast. I'm really honored to have you here. Hello, oh, Vanessa, how are you? Here. <laughs> very good very good thanks for having me no I'm, I'm really happy because uh the first time I saw uh, one of your videos on Instagram I felt the connection uh with all your uh you know your funny uh attitude about how to deal with some <laughs> clients especially with that uh specific video like stop putting filters on professional photography I I, I feel you like really and I thought it was only for food photography not for wedding photography Oh my gosh, no, because anytime you're dealing with people with portraits, you know, they just have to fix their face and not for nothing, me too. Like I have the zoom filter on my face right now, like it's there, but you know, it, it goes everywhere. People just, they want to do what they want to do. Uh, although I do have to say, you know, when I'm photographing people for branding photos, for example, they're going to put a filter on. So it matches our Instagram. So it matches the tone on their website. So I, 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 ha I think I and a lot of other photographers, we've just had to like be irritated by it, but mm -hmm. also let it go. <laughs> yeah. How did you become a wedding photographer? I became a wedding photographer because my high school photography teacher did weddings on the weekends. And after high school, I, I fell in love with photography. I loved it. I went to school for other things because I thought you could not be a photographer like for real. Like that's not a real job. You, you yeah. don't get health insurance with that. You don't get a 401k. You're not working a nine to five that you hate. Um, so I thought I had to get a real job, but at the same time, I was still doing photography and I became a Spanish teacher, started my own photography business at the same time, and then eventually had to quit teaching. And I get really happy every year around August and September when I don't have to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a more flexible uh, kind of job. What do you think compared to uh, being an educator? It's much more flexible. And then it's also like nobody is telling me what to do. Nobody's watching me and critiquing me. Granted, I critique myself enough, but it, yeah. it's different. I don't, I don't do well under oh. authority, I don't think. <laughs> okay. And... When uh, we are talking about wedding photographer, uh, wedding photography, sorry, what are the most common mistakes uh, that you can make when you're starting? The biggest mistake I see most wedding photographers make these days is they don't do what I did and work for somebody else first. Yes. They say, I want to do wedding photography and my friend is getting married. So I'll get my camera and I'll photograph her wedding. When meanwhile, they haven't even been to a wedding lately. They have no idea how weddings work and it's just a recipe for disaster. So I think photographers would very much benefit from working for other photographers for at least a year, at least a year, if not two. I did it for five, which is probably too much, but 
one or two years making mistakes, learning on someone else's reputation, Mm -hmm. not yours, will just do wonders for you. Um, And luckily I didn't make that mistake, thankfully, but I've certainly made many more mistakes. Okay. (laughs) And normally what is the workflow for a wedding photographer be like? So a wedding photographer, it's not, I get hired for this wedding and I photograph it. I only work on the weekends and that's it. It's not like that. It's so much work. Each wedding that you take on usually equates to about 40 to 50 hours of work. So it's all the communication beforehand, getting their timeline in order if they don't have a wedding planner, getting their family photo list together with them so they don't forget everyone. It's all the tips and tricks, all the questions they have, all the planning, of course, shooting it. Then it's editing all the photos, which can take a lot of time. Personally, that's the first thing I outsourced because that just takes way too much time. I said mine to a company called Freedom Edits in the UK, but then it's designing the album. It's you know, selling the album and doing a design session with them, which literally right now, one of my um, couples is in an album design session with, um, with one of my, my designers. So it's so, so much time. The workflow can really get away from you and ruin wedding photography if you don't have a good handle on managing it. So that's crucial. Plus your clients really know when you don't have a handle on your workflow because then they don't see their wedding photos for months and then they're complaining about it. They never get their albums and it can be a disaster very, very quickly if you don't know how to run a business. Okay, and what about when a client uh, contacts you like, hey, Vanessa, I would like to have my wedding photos made by you. How is that process? How is, uh, you know, okay, how is that interview? What do you explore uh, from, from that couple? When a client contacts me, they, uh, two things happen. One, they get emails right away. But secondly, I want to see if they're a good fit for me to photograph their wedding or for my team to do it. Because I do have other photographers that will photograph for me under my brand. And at this point in my career, I've been photographing weddings for 21 years, I think now. I am very picky about whose wedding I will take. I will not take a wedding that The second I read about their wedding, where it is, what their plans are for florals, if I'm bored when I read that that email, I'm like, okay, so it sounds like you would be a great fit for my associate team. Um, And I won't even offer to take it. So I, I have a questionnaire on my website. It's not a lot, but it just tells me a little bit about their budget, about, you know, I give them a chance to tell me about their wedding. And then I decide whether, okay, Am I going to pitch me or my associate team or both of us? Um, And then we go from there. Wow. Yeah, you make like a big exploration uh, on on that Mm -hmm. couple. And it's really wise to know if you are a good fit for for them. Because I believe as as a food photographer, I also like to interview my clients, like first via Zoom. And then Mm -hmm. if I see that client is like a little bit hmm, problematic, I normally say like, no, I don't want to go with this client. Like now. How do you, how do you say that to them? What do you say? No, the thing is like, uh, I try to be a little, a little bit polite. And then when, as soon as I know their budget, I try to go higher. And then I know they are not going to hire me. Because that's that's the way I, I try to do it. Like I don't want to work with this client because I know it's going to be problematic and probably it's going to be make my my life miserable. And right. normally those clients, for example, those who are asking like for discount in I, no, that is not a good client. Mm-mm. No, yeah. definitely not. And you just you don't want to spend your life like that, right? Exactly. I, I want to do something that makes me happy and gives, gives me joy and not like, you know, wasting my time with a client that is like, no, maybe it's going to, no, do it like this, do it like that. I don't like to be, you know, <coughs> micromanaged by, by a client. I, I like when the client trusts in my, you know, in my style and the things that I can do. And that's what I do. I don't know if it is wise, but this is, this is my I think it's trick. wise. I think it's wise. I think when you first start off as a photographer, you sort of have to take all of those. I mean, you have to get yourself established. But once you're done doing that, you know what? 
it's good for the client too. You know, it's not, it's not something that you're being mean. It's, you know what, this client, I'm not going to make her happy. I'm not going to make him happy. So let's, let me suggest a photographer that I know will make you happy. Exactly. Um, Yes. Yeah. Which is how I've said it in the past. Like, you know what, what you're describing is important to you. I really think you're going to like this photographer better and that's okay. Exactly. And uh, in a way it's like also your mental health like that. Oh yeah, (laughs) exactly. Hey, because we're artists, you know, if our mental health goes out the window, like forget it, my photos are going to (laughs) suck. Exactly. Okay. There are many uh, wedding photos and photographers. Um, You are ranked as one of the best uh, wedding photographers in the USA by Canon. But let's talk in particular, in particular about your uh, photographic style. Uh, What is that personal touch that uh, your photos, uh, you know, says immediately people can say, ah, this is a Vanessa's photo. What's your touch? What, What is your, you know, your golden nugget? I hope, I hope that it's the way that people can feel emotion when they look at my photos. That's my goal. What, you know, I'm photographing weddings. I'm not photographing like products, you know, I want, although I have to say, I've definitely looked at like food photography and felt emotion, usually hungry, but (laughs) it's definitely there. But when it comes to photographing weddings in that moment of people's lives, I want them to look at that photo and remember how they felt. Or if they don't even know the couple looking at that photo and getting excited um, Mm. about their own wedding. You know, I just, I want them to feel something. Mm. And then hopefully there is a little bit of consistency with, you know, the color and the style and that kind of thing. But most consumers don't understand that, you know, Mm -hmm. they don't understand. Do you do your own post-production? I do not do my own post-production. I am not good at it. I should not do that. Um, So I hire people to, um, so I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do the same preset on every photo because depending on the situation, uh-huh. that preset's not, not going to work. You know, no. weddings are unique that way. I can't, I can't set them in the studio light and then everything's going to work when I edit it the same. I would love that. Um, so it has to be different and it has to, it just has to match overall. And the way you photograph really does play a part. I think more than the way you edit the photograph because if I walk into a room and I know my clients expect bright and vibrant, timeless color, and then I'm going to photograph it in a way that works with that, that's going to give that type of feel. So um, it's, a, it's a big process. It's mm-hmm. a little bit difficult sometimes, but it's a, it's a process. Okay. And what would it be your advice for those beginners in photography who are struggling to find their own voice? Oh man, that's the hardest thing. And I don't think, I don't think even I have found my own voice yet. I know I've found things that I like and I can replicate. Mm -hmm. So I think my advice would be find a style that you can promise to recreate for your clients, no matter what, because that's ultimately what you need to do, right? You need to be able to set expectations and then fulfill them or exceed them when it comes to your clients. Then from there, you know, start experimenting with a little bit of a different style and this different type of image and do things that are going to creatively fill you up. And then if you find that you like that and you can produce that on every job, then start showing that style if you want to. Um, You know, the style that I show on my wedding photography, it's colorful, it's timeless, it's very clean um, and I can produce that pretty much you know, all the time. Yes. But honestly, if it's up to me, I actually really like a moody photograph. I, I love dark and moody photographs, yes. but it's just not my forte and it's not what I've decided to show and create expectation for. So it's more a decision of what you want to do, what you want to promise and then fulfill for your clients. That's amazing. Thanks for that advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have here on my notes that one of the things that I love about your uh, about you as a photographer, since I found you like about a year ago on Instagram, is the transparency and honesty you communicate 
Do you communicate on social media with your audience? For example, those viral reels that about, like I said in the, in the beginning, like stop putting filter, filters on professional photography. That was hilarious. I'm brutally honest. <laughs> and I really loved about this and many other moments of honesty. What is Vanessa golden rule as a photographer? Oh, the golden rule as a photographer. Um, put yourself in a position to serve your clients and versus make money off of them. I mean, you want to do that too. But once you've obtained that client, your role in that relationship should be to guide and to serve them. Um, I mean, I, I make funny reels and honesty and complain about things all the time. But when it comes to my actual client relationships, I'm going to break rules with them. I'm going to serve them. I'm going to give them what they need, not always what they want, but what they need. And I will prioritize that uh, and really put my heart into it, which can be a downfall because, you know, us photographers, we just are so personal about our work and we want to, you know, please them and you want them to be happy. Um, so that does come back to bite you a little bit, but it's worth it. Amazing. And have you ever experienced that imposter syndrome in Every your career? Day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. You know, it's funny. I, you know, I'll run into people um, and they'll recognize me just randomly on the street and, you know, oh, or I'll have people introduce me and it's, oh, Vanessa, oh, you know, she's a famous photographer. I'm like, have you seen the mess in my room? Like, there's nothing pretty in my normal everyday life. <laughs> I'm crawling on the floor, getting upset over the fact that I did an exercise this morning, just like anyone else is going to be frustrated with their life, not amounting up to what they want it to be. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. So yeah, but you know, you're an artist and you are a star. Everybody knows you like, <laughs> that's an hour and it's a joy. <laughs> I appreciate that. I will start getting red if you say things like that. <laughs> Okay, what is your uh, go-to gear um, in a regular photography session of a, of a wedding? What do you uh, bring in your camera bag? Normally? My my magical combination right now is the Canon R5. Okay. And the Canon twenty eight to seventy f two lens. Okay. That just all types of magic. I'm obsessed with that combination. It just doesn't get any better than that. Okay. And what about um, some flashes or uh, artificial light? Yeah, I bring my Profoto A1X and my Profoto B10. Those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I love using them with colored gels, usually to recreate warmth of the sun if I don't have it. But um, yeah, that's usually what I bring with me. I, I mean, I bring a lot more. Yeah, Actually, this is, this is I, now, but what about like five years? Five years ago, yeah, five I, would years prob ago. I would probably say my 50 millimeter 1.2 lens was my favorite. I could shoot anything with it, shoot landscapes, shoot portraits, shoot groups, details, everything. Uh, and then I would shoot with the 1DX series, which is usually sports people photograph with that, but I just... I liked it. <laughs> okay. And do you work with an assistant, I, I suppose? I always work with an assistant on a wedding day, usually on an engagement session as well. Um, lately, I haven't been. I think I've just been enjoying shooting by myself when it comes to engagement sessions. But yeah, I and I usually have a second photographer on weddings too. Okay. Can you share uh, three tips uh, with those who are interested to make a living as a wedding photographer? Three tips. Yes. Well, one, make sure you have backup gear. Okay. That's huge. Whether it's backing up your photos or backing up the gear that you bring on a wedding, there's no do-overs and you'll ruin your reputation really fast if you're not prepared. Exactly. Secondly, make sure that you turn around images and products in a timely manner communicating with your clients over how long that is and then meeting those deadlines that's another thing that's going to give you a good reputation or a bad reputation uh, and then finally don't bite off more you can chew than you can chew because it <laughs> is it is very easy with weddings to be like oh yeah I'll take that deposit I'll book this again and book myself for 50 weddings next year 
you don't want 50 weddings, let me tell you. That is no way to live no, <laughs> at all. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. And normally, how many pictures do you make uh, in a wedding session? Like, uh, for example, we had in the Spanish podcast, uh, Edu Lopez. He's a very uh, well-known photographer in Tenerife. And then he says that approximately 800 pictures, uh, it's what he makes for, for the couple. Like, like you know, everything like done, done. I tell my couples that I average 80 to 100 photos per hour that I'm there. So if it's an eight hour wedding day, probably around 600, 800 images. If it's a 10 hour wedding day, probably 800 to a thousand. But that does vary depending on, depending on the wedding. Because mm -hmm. some weddings are very elaborate and the florals are insane. And there's so many little details and special things that I have to give them more pictures because there's so much more that was there to be photographed. Yes. So and I do, I do break that rule sometimes. <laughs> my God. I'm really curious about uh, how, uh, how uh, supposed to be like your behavior when you are in a wedding and how it's supposed to be like your, um, outfit for 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 those days like when you're working and I'm, I'm really curious like how do, do you supposed to be like dress up like how is that with you how does it work it does depend on the type of wedding you're going to so the weddings that I typically photograph are a little bit nicer I'm usually in a short black dress that has pockets in it if it's a nicer wedding I actually do have like a ball gown that I wear um but if you're photographing like a Texas barn wedding. I mean, I know photographers that show up in jeans. Okay. I do not do that. I would not do that. But it also isn't bad. It's not inappropriate as long as you're matching it. The personality on the day of though, that's different. And I think that's unique to every photographer and their strengths and what they bring to a wedding day. So for me, what I bring to a wedding day is a sense of calm. I'm always calm. I am a sense of control. I'm always in control. And if you look at my reviews that people give me, they always say the same thing. She was in control of everything. She was calm, even though everything was running late and she got everything done. So that's, that's me. That's what I bring. But I know some other photographers that you know, their strength is bringing fun and being like really over the top crazy and energetic. That's not me. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm fun and I do bring some energy, but my strength would definitely be the calm, the, the making sure everybody's not stressed out. And how do you manage uh, those bridezillas? I really don't get bridezillas. I have to say what I get are momzillas. Oh, and Yes, usually it's a mom that just forgets it's not her wedding day today. Yes. Um, so I, I will usually pacify a mom like that and just give her all this extra attention and ask her what she thinks and, uh, you know, ask her what she wants. Ultimately, I'm going to still do what the couple wants over what the mom wants. Um, but I just find if you just give them extra attention, that's that's all they need they just want to feel important but th that reminds me my experience when I when I go to a restaurant I try to be like the same with the chef like what do you think chef like this and that because he knows he you know his creation and yeah. in the end he's going to be like really critic about his work and also about my work so to make everything work I try to you know to incorporate him and to make him like you know being part of the photo shoot oh absolutely Yes. Definitely. How competitive is the wedding market in the USA at the moment? It is very competitive, okay. but there are also more weddings happening this year than have happened in 40 years. It, yeah. There's, there's just enough work to go around. And I know people get frustrated, myself included, of, you know, my price is too high. So this person is too cheap and they're undercutting me and It happens no matter how much you charge, someone's going to say you're too expensive um, and they'll go for something less expensive. But there, there's just, there is a wedding for every photographer and a certain clientele. It's just a matter of finding them. 
And who were your mentors when you when you were starting or who do you follow for, for that inspiration? How do you find your inspiration? Really Instagram. Instagram is just such a wealth of inspiration, but also can be a little bit intimidating. So I try to not spend a lot of time going through all these other photographers or weddings because it can be inspirational and then it gets overwhelming and you start comparing yourself and you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite photographers, one of uh, the people that I looked up to and inspired me early on is a wedding photographer out in LA. His name is Joe Busink. And he's just, um, he doesn't really do it much anymore, but he, he was a celebrity photographer back in the day, photographed like Jennifer Lopez and Christina Aguilera, Christina Applegate, Kelsey Grammer. Like he, he photographed the best weddings and charged yes. a crazy amount of money for them. Oh. Um, he was just, he's just phenomenal. And he's just such a good soul too. <laughs> and okay. Uh, you, you talk about Instagram and how do you, um, how do you cope with the, with the Instagram lately that, uh, everything is uh, about videos Video. and reels? You know, the reels I think are a humorous outlet for me. So I don't, I don't hate them. It annoys me that I have to do them. And lately, if you look on my Instagram, mm -hmm. I really don't even post anymore. Everything is a reel. So if you're a photographer and that annoys you, don't worry. You don't have to overthink it. Just go to a reel, you know, look through reels, like watch them, find a trending sound. So you're looking at the bottom left, you're looking for an arrow that points this way. Yes. Uh, and that's a trending sound. Just use it. And then you add a photo on top. It doesn't actually have to be a video. You could add one photo for the three <laughs> seconds that that reel is for. Um, maybe add one more after that or behind the scenes or something, but you don't have to overthink it. Just use the feature and it'll work out. And uh, you are the, the person in charge of your own social media. So you don't have a team. So you are the Oh, no, I, I have a team. Uh -huh. I do. <laughs> yes, I have my girl, Amy. She does my social media for me. I, we both do it together. Most of what you see on my stories is just me doing it. She's usually, she's setting up the posts. But if I am, if you see a reel where it's a funny one, that's yeah. just me. Um, if you see a reel where it's like, a nice picture that's her <laughs> amazing and let's talk about your work again what is the most uh I mean what is that work that you are most uh, proud of it's always the ones that mean the most to my clients uh and this is going to be a little sad but mm -hmm. just yesterday mm -hmm. yeah yesterday or Saturday um I had photographed two sisters weddings one like two years ago and one last year uh, and their mother died of cancer and uh, just this weekend and I saw the pictures you know they posted kind of announcing it and they used one of my pictures that I took of all three of them holding hands at the mm -hmm. last wedding that I took and I took that picture on purpose because I knew she had cancer she had had cancer for years and it was just a constant battle yes but I mean, I took that picture on purpose, knowing that one day that was going to mean the world to them. Um, so those are the pictures I'm most proud of. The ones that I, I take that end up meaning more than just a photograph. Beautiful. And let's talk about your role about as an educator. I am going to create a subscription service. So a lot. I have a lot of education. You can go to vanessajoy.com and there's a little tab it says education or for photographers or something but I have a lot of courses out there and now I want to create a subscription service uh, really on photography education I'll start it off with lighting but I'll probably add things like posing and um, the business stuff and free downloads and lighting guides and all of that but I just want to create something that's a little bit more accessible to everyone versus these really expensive courses that are, you know, $300, which isn't the most expensive course, but it's still expensive. Yes. So I want to create something that's like $30 a month um, and you get really good quality education. So that's what I'm filming this summer. 
Amazing. And do you have any others, uh, other hobbies besides uh, photography? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> like, uh, uh, no. I, uh, I mean, I like going out to eat with my husband. I like uh, drinking wine. But no, I also have kids. So it's either I'm working or I'm taking care of my kids. That's just, that's life right now. Yes, I can imagine. I, I know I feel you. Like I'm, I'm taking right now like a, a big break from social. I'm just like dedicated to, okay, my client's work and also my studio. And also, yeah, yeah, being a, a little bit away from social, but uh, to enjoy my family. You know, those moments that yeah. probably we are missing because right. uh, we are too much on Instagram. Absolutely. Very exactly. true. <laughs> Would you be willing to do this interview in Spanish for Simarca de Agua podcast? Because I know you were um, a, a Spanish yeah. uh, teacher. <laughs> Puedo tratar hacerlo, pero casi nunca practico español, entonces va a ser muy lento. <laughs> you sound amazing, let me tell you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy to have you here, Vanessa. Uh, I, I really want to thank you you know, with all my heart for accepting this invitation to my podcast in English to get to know you a little bit better. And yeah, I, I, my, my intuition never fails. When I, when I saw you, I said, this girl's, you know, this girl can speak <laughs> Spanish and I, I feel you. And I really love your, all your videos and your work. It's amazing. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. And definitely if you want to keep up, Instagram is where I, you know, I hang out the most and YouTube is where you get all the education. So if you can find me, Vanessa Joy, on either one. Exactly. I'm going to leave all the information of Vanessa in the description uh, description box of the episode and you can uh, find her on Instagram, her website. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for accepting this invitation and I wish you a great day. Absolutely. Same to you.